So this is going to be how to set up the angle iron out bending using the uh, large master die as well as one of these cam dies and a, uh, a radius block here. It is intended for bending angle iron flange out, so that would be with the flange on the outside of that circle. That's what the designers of the machine of the Hossfeld bender uh, intended for this setup. Uh, but more often in our shop, it's used for bending large circles. And so one of our past faculty members actually took the time to write out a step-by-step -step instruction and, uh, and some pointers on how to bend large circles. So that's a pretty handy thing to find in the bender manual. So you can turn to that page. Uh, it's one of the few pages that are in color uh, and it'll guide you through the whole setup process and, uh, and give you some pointers. I'll show you what the manufacturer intended, uh, at least for this uh, initial setup. So you'll need this large um, master die usually found on the bottom shelf. You'll need one of these wrist pins. Uh, that's going to attach the master die to the swing arm assembly. Then the swing arm assembly is attached to the mainframe assembly with one of these mainframe U-pins. And then your cam die is going to be uh, attached via the center pin location with a center pin. Uh, so let's get to setting that guy up. So the first step to getting this setup completed is uh, attaching this master die to the swing arm. Now notice that there's an offset hole on this one, just like that bulldozer die if you're familiar with that setup. Uh, so the hole is closer to this edge than it is to that edge, and that's a clue. You want to attach this guy to the swing arm from that second 5 8 hole from the end there. And the other thing that complicates this whole situation is if I flip this die around, this little notch in here uh, will basically ride the mainframe lower uh, assembly here and that means that I can't attach this way back here where I'd like to because then I don't have the clearance these notches are going to get uh, in the way and so we have to do this whole assembly uh, up front here and so first I'm going to swing this guy over um, I'm going to bring this a little closer to make my life easier and I'm going to grab one of these uh, wrist pins here so it's again the pin with no head and we're going to go in that second hole and before I let go of that pin I'm going to uh, hold you know basically put a finger um, somewhere underneath the machine here and this is where you you never want to uh, have somebody else's hand under the machine you'll always want it to be your own because you don't want to pinch somebody else's hand in there and so I'll just give it a wiggle until it drops in place now this is where it gets a little bit uh, tricky but I'm going to keep my hand and very carefully so I don't pinch myself wiggle this so that pin gets captivated so now I can remove my hand from that dangerous position underneath there and then this is the part that a lot of folks have trouble with we got to move this whole set up back so that that uh, first hole uh, in the swing arm reaches all the way back here. You can kind of switch this around to uh, whichever material thickness that you're working with uh, depending on what dies you have in there but getting this whole assembly back can be a little tricky so what I like to do is put a palm on this side here and I can lean on that uh, and then I'm gonna with this uh, other hand I'm gonna grab the swing arm and wiggle sort of up and down and push back and that is usually the uh, the scenario that leads to the most success for me then once we have those holes that we're looking for lined up we'll drop in this middle uh, you know u-shaped pin for the mainframe assembly make sure it goes all the way down uh, and now you can see that wrist action that they talk about so that this whole assembly moves forward and back uh, with this arm and again we can kind of change that location depending on our, our material so uh, we'll be a little flexible there the next thing we do is decide on a radius block to use and so this is the style radius block that we're using uh, and they're all marked and so this is a five inch uh, radius uh, over here and then we're going to grab a cam die and these guys um, are also marked and they usually have two radii uh, and so there's a four inch here and then there's a five inch there uh, and so depending on the material you're using um, I'm just using fl angle iron flange out so I've just got an eighth inch flange there I'm going to mate up the five inch uh, to the five inch sometimes you might need to mismatch those uh, if you're bending like round bar or square bar or something like that and then we'll give ourselves a little bit of clearance and then drop in this uh, center pin making sure that this bottom uh, piece is swung in place so that it doesn't uh, fall all the way through the machine and so now you can see that you've got that that wrist action and that crushing action um, working for you and you have enough clearance here to uh, to complete the the action of this particular bend 
So if you're using this setup to actually bend angle iron uh, flange out, you notice that this radius block is um, sort of free floating in there and has like a wedge shape in the back here. And that's so that you feed the flange of your angle iron underneath that uh, portion there. And as you crush in your bend, that wedge is gonna basically hold that flange flat as you feed the material in. If you're just doing square or round bar, you can just kind of feed your material in, just sort of level in with this surface and don't worry about that block. You want to keep that block uh, straight down and then you'll just sort of crush in uh, the bend as you go along. So in this particular scenario, I'm using eighth inch wall angle iron and it's got an equal three quarter inch leg. And that's pretty safe on a block like this. A five inch radius should give me a 10 inch circle. Um, if you were to try and increase the length of that leg, it, you're going to want to use a, a larger radius. You might get a lot of deformation. So I'm just going to feed my part in and then give it a little initial crush here, a pinch, if you will, and then just to get that bend started and feed in the material uh, little bits at a time here, making sure that the material is flat on this, on this platen here um, as I go. And just nice, even pressure. Um, on the handle here and I've got the extension arm on and we should be able to achieve a full circle if we'd like. Uh, that's another thing that you'll want to uh, keep in mind is that when you're bending these complete circles you're going to want to have extra material. You're going to get kind of a gnarly um, start and finish to the bends. You're never going to be able to figure out, you know, so for example, this is a, this is going to be a 10 inch circle. Uh, theoretically, I would only need about, you know, 31, 32 inches or so worth of material, but I'm going to get a lot of deformation at the ends. You could already see uh, that material coming out a little wonky. Um, and so I'm going to want to cut some of that off. It's really important to keep the material uh, nice and flat um, with the uh, ground. If you start to roll it in or out, this is really critical with things like uh, flat bar and, uh, and rectangular bar and round bar. Um, they tend to roll in there really easily. And so having uh, a roller stand or an extra set of eyes for larger diameter circles uh, can be a real handy, handy thing. Notice that I keep one foot out as I bend out in my back so that I, if something lets go, I don't go taking a tumble. And also, if the material starts to twist or roll in there on you, you can always give it a little, uh, a little help, a little tweak up now and then. And that'll kind of help things along. So uh, I'm just going to take a little trim cut here because you can see there's a good bit of distortion at the beginning of this guy. That'll just save me a little time later. So as this wraps around, I don't have quite as much material to remove um, later on. So I'm just going to clamp this part down pretty well uh, before I make that cut. I'm just going to lay a combination square on a nice sharp piece of soapstone here. Uh, you can kind of use whatever you'd like, but soapstone gives a nice bright line and uh, we can trim up to that line a little later. So now this is the great dilemma. Do you go over? Do you go under? Uh, I'm going to try and go over just to fight some of that distortion.
usually a good idea to go a little bit further. And if the material were taller, you could always come up here rather than down there. But let's check on it. And so uh, it's not too bad. It actually lines up pretty well right in there. So I think we'll call that done. Uh, we could either trim it right here or make two more trim cuts and, uh, and that'll be a pretty good circle. So you can see what they mean by angle iron flange out. And um, if we take a tape measure up to it, we'll see that you get a tighter radius than what they were intending. So I'm getting about a nine inch circle out of this 10 inch die that a five inch radius is uh, clearly lying to us a little bit. So that's the angle iron flange out set up on the Haasfeld bender. You can bend things really just to the radii that we have in the cabinet. The smallest is about four inches and it goes up to about 48 inches. So that would be a eight inch diameter round up to a eight foot diameter round. So we've got a pretty large range of dies in our cabinet which is pretty good. However, you're limited to those sizes and also going to be limited based on the material you're trying to bend. You could bend other materials such as solid round or square. Uh, I find that the round gets a little tricky because it likes to twist on you. Uh, square bar, lighter square bar works pretty well. You know, half inch, three eighths, and you can even bend some flat stock the easy way on this setup. Just realize that it's not an infinite ring roller that you might have on, you know, different types of hydraulic benders. So we're somewhat limited in terms of the size, you know, variability that you'll get. When you're done, make sure everything gets broken down and put back into the cabinet safe and sound. And uh, don't forget to lock that cabinet up when you're done so that those pins are in place for the next user. As always, make sure that you're working safely. And if you have any questions, just ask your instructor or the shop technician and uh, check out some of the other videos that we have on the Haasfeld if you're trying to do a different setup.